Good evening, everyone. Welcome to New World, to this service of Good Friday. It is uh, good to have you here with us today as we reflect on this uh, very important occasion for us as Christians. It was at around 9 a.m. when Jesus was crucified on a day just like this, and about four hours ago, he died on the cross. So just keep that in mind as we gather here tonight. Will you please stand with me as you're able and join me in this greeting. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. Sometimes it causes 
causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? When they nailed him to the tree Oh, oh, oh sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble You'll see the response on the screen. Oh, my people, oh, my church, what have I done to you? Or in what have I offended you? I led you forth from the land of Egypt and delivered you by the waters of baptism, but you have prepared a cross for me. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. I led you through the forest. Forty years and fed you with manna. I brought you through times of persecution and of renewal and gave you my body, the bread of heaven. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy my God, holy mighty. Holy 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 I made you branches of my vineyard and gave you the water of salvation. But when I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar and gall and pierced with a spear the side of your Savior. I went before you in a pillar of cloud, but you, led me, but you led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I brought you to a land of freedom and prosperity, but you have scourged, mocked, 
and beaten me. upon us. I gave you a royal scepter and bestowed the king, keys to the kingdom, but you have given me a crown of thorns. I raised you on high with great power, but you have hanged me on the cross. Holy and mighty, holy and immortal, I have mercy upon us. My peace I gave you, which the world cannot give, and washed your feet as a servant, but you draw the sword to strike in my name and seek high places in my kingdom. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. I accepted the cup of suffering and death for your sakes, but you scatter and deny and abandon me. I sent the spirit of truth to lead you, but you close your hearts to guidance. Holy God, holy and holy and immortal have mercy upon us. I called you to go and bring forth fruit, but you cast lots for my clothing. I prayed that you all may be one, but you continue to quarrel and divide. I grafted you into the tree of my chosen people, Israel, but you turned on them with persecution and mass murder. I made you joint heirs with them of my covenants, but you made them scapegoats for all your guilt. I come to you as the least of your brothers and sisters. I was hungry, but you gave me no food. Thirsty, but you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. Naked, but you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Mercy upon us. They crucified my Lord, and he never said a mumbling word. They crucified my Lord. And he never said a mumbling word, not a word, not a word, not a word. They led him to a tree. And he never said a mumbling word. They nailed him to a tree. And he never said a mumbling word. Not a word. Not a word. Not a word. They pierced him in the side, and he never said a mumbling word. They pierced him in the side, and he never said a mumbling word. Not a word, not a word, not a word. The blood came trickling down, and he never said a mumbling word. The blood came trickling down, and he never said a mumbling word, not a word, not a word, 
not a word. He bowed his head and died, and he never said a mumbling word. He bowed his head and died, and he never said a mumbling word, not a word, not a word, not a The magnitude of the gift of Jesus' death on the cross can be difficult to put into words. But as with all things, Jesus shows us the way. The seven last words, the phrases spoken by your Savior and recorded in the Gospels, provide powerful messages for us to ponder and relate to our daily lives. Father, forgive them. It makes sense that the first word of Jesus from the cross is a word of forgiveness. Despite being falsely accused, convicted, and tortured, Jesus pleased with God to show mercy to his crucifiers. This embodies the purpose of the cross. Jesus sacrifices himself to absolve our sins and restore our relationship with God. When we read, Father, forgive them, let us remember that we too are forgiven through Christ. As John states in his first letter, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. Today you will join me in paradise. As Jesus suffered on the cross, he faced ridicule from leaders, soldiers, and one of the criminals crucified alongside him. However, the other criminal recognized the injustice and defended Jesus before pleading, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus assured him, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus' words mean that entrance to heaven is not determined by your actions, merits, but through God's mercy and grace, experienced by placing your faith and trust in Jesus. Woman, here is your son. What Jesus faced death his mother remained by his side, reminding us of his humanity. He had once been a boy, carried in his mother's womb. In his final moments, Jesus fulfilled his role as both the world's savior and a son, not neglecting his early relationships. As a genuine human being, Jesus endured immense suffering which was entirely real. He bore this pain for each of us. My God, why have you forsaken me? In his most human state, Jesus Christ out from the cross, enduring intense physical and emotional pain and feeling abandoned by both his friends and the Father. This sense of abandonment was far worse than any physical or emotional torment. 2 Corinthians 5.21 states, God made him who had no sin to be sin 
for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus' unwavering commitment to our salvation invites us to embrace confession, humility, worship, and faithfulness. I am thirsty. Jesus, expressing a human need, is given a sponge soaked in sour wine to alleviate his thirst. In his suffering, he represents our own needs. What do you thirst for? What do you thirst for? We can find solace in the knowledge that Jesus endured physical thirst on the cross and much more to satisfy our yearning for the water of life. It is finished. Jesus alters human history in just three words, triumphing over sin and death and fulfilling God's promises. He accomplished his mission, introducing God's kingdom and unveiling his love and grace. Jesus' completion of his divine task benefits us all. As a result, we have hope in this life and the next, knowing that nothing can sever us from God's love. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Jesus' journey concludes and simultaneously commences anew by stating, Father, into your hands I command my, commend my spirit. He places his fate in the care of his heavenly Father. And in doing so, Jesus expresses hope in the Father as hope appears non-existent. With God, hope for the future persists, even as we may face our own mortality. As we live tonight, we have a memento for use. This is not the kind of nails that were used to crucify Jesus. They, those were much bigger. But you're welcome to take one with you. There's nothing special about it. It's just a nail. But what it may represent to you perhaps will be very significant. It will remind you of what just a witness tonight. Please stand with me as you're able. May Jesus Christ, who for sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you now and forever. Amen. We are dismissed.